Now let us discuss operations to systems under an equilibrium environment, in particular the Jarczynski equality in the setting of Markov jump processes. Okay, so here is a typical situation that we have in mind. This is an isothermal operation in thermodynamics. So suppose that we have an environment with fixed temperature T, and here is the system of our interest. Suppose that it's a gas contained in a, in a piston cylinder with diosomer wall. And then initial, um, suppose that it's initially, the gas is initially in equilibrium with the same temperature as the environment. And here is an external mechanical agent who makes an operation to the system by say, pulling this piston. And even though this is initially in equilibrium state, uh, if you move, if you pull this piston quickly, then uh, the system goes into equilib non-equilibrium state and we have non-equilibrium process. And here, this is the final state. And since this external agent is a mechanical existence, it can measure the force exerted by the system to this agent, and it can compute the work W done by the system to the agent during this process. So this W, the work, the mechanical work is the main object of our interest. Okay, so now this is, this is a thermodynamic setting. So let us uh, formulate the same thing microscopically so that we can use uh, the setting of Markov jump processes. So again, we consider a system with some controllable parameter, a parameter that can be controlled mechanically that we write alpha. And we suppose that it takes value in R to the new, where new is just one, two or something. Well, this is not important. Uh, the only thing important is that alpha can be changed continuously, okay? And we assume that a model is fixed by uh, specifying alpha. So the energy Ej for each microscopic state J depends on this parameter alpha. And also the transition rate depends on this alpha. And the detail balance condition is valid for each alpha, okay? With this omega alpha and E alpha, okay? This is our assumption. And here is an external agent. And what the external, external agent does is to control alpha, this parameter alpha, according to a fixed protocol alpha T. This means that, I mean, this agent fixes the schedule in advance or uh, mathematically fixes a function alpha t of time and simply changes alpha according to this fixed function, okay? So uh, in this way, since alpha becomes time dependent, so this energy becomes time dependent. And so we can also always write like th write, write this like this, but uh, we, for simplicity, we abbreviate this uh, t dependent energy like this and t dependent omega like this. So this and this, these are fixed functions. They are fixed by our protocol. Okay. And again, omega tilde denote a, a collection of all omegas for all k, j, and t. Okay. Now, uh, here's a very important consideration about heat and work. And actually what I discuss in this first slide is very standard and it has been known since like the beginning of 20th century. Okay, so this is this is very standard in usual statistical mechanics. Okay, so um, here this R is the transition rate matrix corresponding to this omega and it satisfies this detail balance condition. Okay, and so this R is fixed by our protocol. Okay, and we consider this master equation. And so this P of T is determined by the initial distribution and, also, and this master equation. So suppose that we have a solution PT, and then by using this PT, we uh, consider the standard expectation value of this E, uh, time dependent energy. So th this EJT, I stress, is fixed by our protocol, okay? And so this PJ is the solution of master equation. And this is just the, the very standard expectation value of a state quantity, okay? Now we consider the time derivative of this. Uh, so this is the energy expectation value of the system at time t. We consider the time derivative of this en energy expectation value. Since this is a product, product of two things, two time dependent functions, uh, of course, this can be written as a sum of two different parts, okay? And rather interestingly, uh, these two parts correspond to actually work and heat. Okay, let's look at this carefully. So first of all, uh, we have this. 
So we have now time derivative of E, and but you know this E is a function determined by this protocol. So uh, in this case, the change of energy, this is a change of energy caused directly, directly by the change in this parameter alpha t. So the external agent changes alpha t, so this change, this change occurs. So uh, we can identify this as the work done in unit time by the system on the agent. Okay. So this is a rough picture. So in, in, if, you comp if you look at this change of energy, you don't care about the change of the state. So you suppose that the state of the system does not change and only this uh, potential profile changes. So this was the original profile and this slightly changes. And of course, then uh, mechanical work uh, it's transferred from the system to the agent, okay? Because because the agent changes this potential, okay? Now look at this part. In this part, uh, e we don't care about the change of e, or e does not e, e need not have to change. And uh, here, what is important is the change of p, okay? So this can be identified as the change of energy caused by the change in the probability distribution or the change in the state, okay? Then this can be uh, interpreted as the heat transferred in unit time from the system to the bus. This is another, this is again picture. In this case, the landscape does not change, but uh, since we, we, we look at the change of this P, that means that we look at some uh, jump of state from J to K. And in this case, as we discussed before, uh, the energy difference goes to the heat path as heat. So uh, this is a very simple mathematics. You have product of two time dependent functions. So the time derivative can be written as sum, the sum of two parts, but this corresponds to power and this corresponds to heat current, okay? So as I said, this, this has been standard for quite a long time since the beginning of 20th century. But here is something slightly different and newer. So here is the power. And so we can integrate this over time to get the total work done by the system to the agent, okay? Now we want to write this quantity as a path average over the history of a path quantity W double hat, okay? Now, uh, if you recall what we discussed in uh, part two, page 44, you immediately find that this quantity uh, takes value in this path, uh, which is written like this. Okay, uh, you can easily find this by uh, comparing this, this, and this is page 44, part two, uh, with this thing and this thing, okay? And so this F becomes E dot or minus E dot here. But anyway, uh, if you compare all this, you will find that this, this is precisely what we want, okay? So uh, this is the total work total work done by the agent in a specific path in, in a single history in this Markov jump process, okay? So this is a schematic view. And uh, this is, actually this is enough for our discussion, but we can also uh, consider the same thing for here. here. So by integrating this, uh, we, we see, we get the total heat transferred from the system to the bath, okay? And so this is just the integration. And if you use the master equation here and do a little bit of rewriting, you can write this like this. And again, you see that this can be written as the expectation value of a path quantity Q double hat. And this, uh, this quantity takes value Q gamma, which is like this. And again, uh, you see this from the consideration in part two, page 45, which is this. Uh, you just compare this and this, yes. Uh, yes, I think you can find it. Anyway, so rather interestingly here, we could define work W and heat for each path gamma, okay? And of course we discussed uh, power and heat current. So so the total work and total Q here in this in this classical standard consideration, but these were only for the expectation value. But here it's it's different. We are discussing the work and heat for each history, each path in this stochastic process. And uh, now this kind of idea is very standard, but, but I believe it was a new thought 
at the end of the 20th century. And as far as I know, uh, this kind of formulation was done first by Ken Sakimoto for stochastic uh, differential equations. And slightly after that, uh, Chris Jarosinski formulated this for Markov jump process. So what we use is this one, Markov jump processes, when he uh, derived his, his equality for Markov jump processes. And apparently they're, it's very, they are very close, and this is very accidental. And I, I'm sure that Jar Chris Jarosinski did not, did not know about Ken Sakimoto's work. OK, anyway, uh, this. This was very important uh, preparation. And now we can go to the discussion of the Jarotinsky equality. So on uh, the same setting, we consider an um, operation in an equilibrium environment from time zero to tau. And uh, this is energy function. Depend so this is fixed by protocol, and this is transition rate function. And it satisfies detail balance condition when omega is non-zero. And OK, this is one notation. Uh, we denote the initial energy as Ej and the final energy at time tau as Ej prime. Okay, and this uh, from this we see that the en entropy production is written like this. And yeah, actually we have seen this before. So this is actually the heat transferred from the system to the mass at when jump from k to j takes place. Okay, and now on uh, in our setting, so we are sorry we are interested in this situation. So here, the system is initially in the equilibrium state with the same temperature as the environment. And in our case, beta is the temperature of the, beta is the inverse temperature of this, in, in this environment. So we require the system to have the same temperature in the initial state. So we choose our initial distribution as the canonical distribution with the same beta as the environment, as the, uh, as the heat path, okay? And here we and and we also choose this uh, probability distribution Q as the canonical distribution corresponding to this final energy, and that's denoted PJ canonical prime. Okay. And we recall uh, what it's called the integrated fluctuation theorem that we discussed in page fifty in part two. This was a very abstract, weird identity which looks like this. Okay, and yeah. This is the total entropy production. This is the uh, initial probability distribution evaluated at the beginning of the path. And this Q is anything. Q is an arbitrary probability distribution and it's evaluated at the uh, final point of the path. So anyway, this is an exact, exact identity. Okay. And we are going to make use of this here uh, with this initial state, with this, uh, with this, entropy production and this uh, arbitrary probability distribution is chosen like this. And we use this. So uh, we, we, should ex we should evaluate this part. So let's call this star. Okay, so this is the path we want to consider. Then the entropy production is simply given by this. And as I said, this is the heat transferred from the system to the bath in the uh, mth jump. And plus or m plus one m plus first jump or whatever, and this is the uh, <clears throat> log p gamma initial. This is the initial distribution, and gamma initial is nothing but j zero. So we and e j is e j zero at time zero. So this is written like this. In terms of the free energy, we have this. Okay, and uh, this is what. This is the final, uh, no, no, this is arbitrary Q chosen as this. And so this is written like this. And this is a, this is the corresponding free energy. Okay, this is a corresponding free energy. And uh, so this star becomes, star is simply the, the sum of this, this, and this. So uh, actually I realized that I haven't defined F prime yet. Just a moment. Oh, so I, I, I added the definitions here. Oops. Definitions here and here. Okay. I think it's now clear. Of course, it was clear from the beginning. So anyway, we have this. And now uh, we want to consider this quantity star. So we have this, this, this. Okay. So uh, we have this, this, this. So uh, we 
just write it like this, but how did I do this? Well, first of all, we have beta here, and this ej0 is written here. And this one is here with minus sign, and this one is here, okay? And now we have f here, and they are here, okay? I wrote this in this order, and now we want to reorganize this summation like this. Okay, it's uh, it's easy if you, for for example, if you look at the here, we have e j zero at time zero, and if you look at the first term here, you have e j zero at time t one. Okay, so you want to cons okay, you you consider this minus this and put it out, and this is the first term in this sum. Okay, so in, this doesn't look very different, but it's very different. Here, here the sum, in this sum, we have the same time variable here, and we have different j. Okay, so this corresponded to heat. But here, we have to reorganize. So we have this and this, then we could reorganize this. And after reorganization, uh, here in this sum, we have same j, but different t. Okay, and now, since we have same j and different t, uh, you can rewrite this by using time derivative like this. Okay. Then, of course, this is what we have seen before. This is W gamma, the total work done by the system to the agent in A path gamma. Okay. So uh, this quantity star can be written like this: beta W minus F plus F plus F prime. Now we are ready to derive the Jaucinski equality for Markov jump processes. So it was done by Chris Jaucinski in 97 uh, in a different paper than the one we discussed before. So anyway, this quantity star is written like W gamma minus delta F, where delta F is a difference between the Helmholtz free energies corresponding to the initial energy and the final energy. And since we do have this integrated fluctuation theorem, we do get this exact equality. This is not an approximate equality or inequality. This is an exact equality that holds for any operation within this framework of Markov jump processes, but it can be a slow operation or very quick, fast operation, or, and it applies to any system described by Markov jump processes. So it can be a large system, micros macroscopic system where we expect thermodynamic behavior, or it can be a very small system where we see a uh, very large fluctuation, okay? And there is actually a corresponding fluctuation theorem behind this, and it's, it, it's called the Crookes fluctuation theorem. And it was discovered by Gavin Crookes in 1999, and it looks like this. So it, it's usual, it again looks like usual fluctuation theorem, but there is one complication. So this uh, this is the standard uh, probability distribution for W, but this one is the probability distribution of that work in the inverse pro inverse process where we have this inverse protocol and the initial state is this p canonical prime. Okay, and we don't derive this, but you can e rather easily derive this by using the detailed fluctuation theorem. Okay. Now, uh, of course, we do have an implication on the second law of thermodynamics. So again, we use Janssen's inequality, which is this, and then uh, we do have this Jarczynski equality. So if you compare here and here, you see that you get this inequality here. And this is uh, the W total, the total, the expectation value of the total work done by the system to the external agent. So uh, this W total less than delta is the, the fact that this W total is bounded from above by delta F is nothing but the maximum work principle, one form of the second law of thermodynamics. So we can say that the thermodynam uh, the second law of thermodynamics in the setting of Markov jump processes uh, is proved, is proved by using the Jaucinski equality, okay? And if we were, if we are considering a macros, macroscopic system, and then this W double hat, the work essentially does not fluctuate, okay, within uh, the precision of our measurement. So in this case, uh, this this can be really interpreted as the uh, second law, the maximum work principle in thermodynamics. And but of course, in 
small system, uh, this this quantity exhibits some fluctuation. And in this case, you may you may observe violation in quotation of the second law in some probabilistic sense. Okay, in this sense, uh, W fluctuates. So sometimes, some uh, so this is inequality, but this may be violated sometimes. So let's look at the probability that this is violated. So take any positive theta and consider the probability that this is larger than delta f plus theta. So this is a violation of this inequality. And you can easily show that this uh, probability of violation is bounded from above by this. And so, so let's go to here. So suppose that this theta, theta is larger, much larger than kt. So kt is the, uh, the unit, roughly the unit of microscopic energy in when we, the temperature is t. Okay. So if theta is much, much larger than kT, then this is much, this is very large. So this, this is, this is something very, very small. So you can basically neglect the probability of this uh, violation. And in a macroscopic system, in a macroscopic system, uh, theta should be much larger. So uh, it means that we do not have, uh, this probability is essentially zero. In, in a macroscopic system. But if you are looking at very small mesoscopic systems, small systems like uh, like protein motor or something, biological motor, then uh, the energy of order kT is relevant. And in that case, in this very small energy scale, you may observe this kind of event where the second law is in some sense violated probabilistically. Okay, so let, let us derive this inequality. It's very easy. So this left-hand side probability is written in, written like this by using this chi, the characteristic, func characteristic function, which is one when the inside is true and zero when the inside is zero, and the path expectation value. And now this is a very simple inequality. This this thing, characteristic function, is upper bounded by e to the x y. Well, the, if you look at the graph, this this simply jumps from zero to one, one at zero. And if you look at this exponential function, it looks like this. So this is a trivial inequality. So uh, well, actually, this must be double, uh, double, double. Yes, bracket. Oops. And so this is bounded like this. And by using this, uh, well, no, by using Jaucinski equality, you see that this is equal to e to the minus beta theta. Okay, so we have this. So uh, the moral, so the conclusion is that if we are, if we, we are working on, if we are interested in a macroscopic system, uh, this gives the precise the second law, precise second law of thermodynamics that we want in thermodynamics. And it, for small system, we do have the second law, but in, in the average sense. So probabilistically, we may observe violation of the second law. So let's look at a very simple example. Actually, this is an anticlimax. This, this example is not interesting at all, but, but anyway, let's, let me discuss. So consider a very simple system of, cons that consists of n independent spins. So each spin takes value plus or minus. So uh, this is the state of n spins. So, there are, so this uh, takes two to the n different state. And suppose that the energy of the system is given like this. So for, <clears throat> Uh, time between zero and tau over two, the energy is zero. So this means that this is a real free spin, no magnetic field, no nothing. And after, at this time, uh, energy is given by this. Again, it's a very simple system, uh, no interaction between spins. And we simply have energy, uh, Zeeman energy coming from the uniform magnetic field. Okay, so in here, so uh, we start from no magnetic field and at this, time we apply, we suddenly apply this magnetic field. So this kind of sudden change of energy is usually called quench. Okay, anyway, so this is very simple and everything is almost trivial, but anyway, uh, <clears throat> initially our energy is zero. So this is our partition function. Finally, this is our energy. So this is our partition function. And the difference in free energy is simply given like this. And so if the, this is very small, it's given by this. And W, the work 
is simply we, we jump from here to here. So the uh, work is given by this. Okay, so we do this work at time tau over two. And before, before this sudden change of energy, the uh, energy is just zero, the, the spins are totally free. So we see that all, all spins point up or down with probability of one half. So all sigma appears with equal probability two to the minus s before the operation. So this means that the expectation value of this is zero and the fluctuation is very small. So if you take this square root, you get this. So this, uh, the fluctuation is over, of order square root n. And of course, since this is zero and delta f is strictly positive, this second law, the, the maximum work principle is satisfied, okay? It is actually satisfied as a strict inequality because this is strictly positive and this is zero, okay? And uh, I, uh, this is what I wanted to discuss, but if you look at each, each process, and then uh, when n equal one with probability one half, our work is h, positive h, positive value. Our work takes positive value h and negative value minus h. And in this case, you can easily show that this h is strictly larger than delta f. So in this case, the, the maximum work principle says that w is less than or equal to delta f, but in this case, W is strictly less, strictly larger than delta F. So in this case, the second law is in some sense violated. But this is just with probability one half. And in the remaining probability one half, it is the second law, the, the maximum work principle is satisfied. So you can say that the second law is violated with probability one half. Okay. But anyway, in average, in average, it's satisfied. And of course, when N is huge, when n is huge, w uh, is distributed according to this Gaussian distribution. And if we evaluate the probability that the second law is violated, it's it's very, very small. It's just negligible. So in this case, uh, you don't you don't have any violation of the second law. Of course, this is a macroscopic system. And actually, in this case, uh, since w is essentially zero and does not fluctuate, and delta f is strictly positive. So uh, this this case, w near delta f is, uh, w nearly equal delta f is even impossible. So this is a, a strict irreversible process. Okay, well, this, this example was not very illuminating, but anyway, I wanted to stress that uh, we see, we do see an apparent violation of the second law in some probabilistic sense. Okay, so that's all for this video.